Japan, F1H2 World Championship launched its 34th season with the opening round at the 16th Grand Prix of Portugal in Portimao. Situated in the Algarve region, Portimao is one of the most beautiful corners of southern Portugal, a bustling tourism haven with year-round sun, sea and surf. A historic fishing town, Portimao lives and breathes at one with the ocean. It's located on a truly breathtaking coastline, full of towering cliffs and rocky shores. Its sandy beaches stretch out for as far as the eye can see, attracting people far and wide year-round. Portimao is more than just beaches. It has some of the best golf links in the country, along with fantastic shopping and fresh and delectable cuisine with seafood literally scooped fresh out of the sea and onto the plate. The sardine dishes of this region are famous, and there's a whole festival dedicated to them, filling the town's restaurants with visitors from all over the country and Europe annually. The historic city center is unique, crowned with a cathedral, and hosts concerts and festivals year-round. Little wonder that Portimao hosts its 15th UIM F1H2O World Championship Grand Prix, making it one of the favorite stops for drivers, teams, and F1H2O fans worldwide. Those who are brave enough have the chance to experience the thrill of being in an F1H2O boat firsthand with a ride in the F1H2O two-seater. hosts 19 drivers from 11 countries and 9 teams competing in the Grand Prix of Portugal in a talent-packed field that included 3 world champions and 9 Grand Prix winners. Defending world team champion CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team is led by 3-time defending world champion Frenchman Philippe Schiap, who's also the defending Grand Prix of Portugal champion, having won here last year. He's out to defend his title and get his 2017 campaign off to a winning start in his quest to become only the second driver after Guido Capellini to win four consecutive world titles. We have many, many sessions uh, to uh, training and uh, I think I, I know very well my boat and uh, we have uh, special props for the start. And uh, hey, I have a little uh, secret for that and uh, it's uh, good. Shiop's new teammate is son-in-law and World Endurance Championship partner Peter Morin, an experienced racer who will be competing in F1H2O for the first time. The locals will be cheering one of their own in Portimao as 17-year tour veteran F1H2O racer Duarte Benevente flies the Portuguese flag for F1 Atlantic team. He's looking for the edge and another podium with local support behind him in home waters. Benevente is joined by Australian Grant Trask, who has already proven he can race with the best of them in the two Grand Prix he entered last year. One of Dubai's most famous international sporting brand names, Victory Team, has brought in former Abu Dhabi and Emirates team manager Scott Gilman to lead the Dubai outfit, which features last year's world runner-up Sean Torrente, a tower of consistency who finished in the top four in all seven races in 2016. And I was really proud of my drive last year. I was proud of the, the, the consistency that I brought to my driving. I felt it was the best I've driven ever in my career, um, where I've chose and picked and chose when I wanted to really take a chance and not taking that chance all the time. And uh, I was proud that the worst finish we had all year was a fourth. Uh, we were pretty much on the podium just about every race, um, and we got a win. So going into this year, I, I think we can take the final step. I think we're really close. He's joined by another former Emirates team transfer, Ahmed Al Hamali, who won a memorable seventh Grand Prix title in Liuzhou last year. He's sure to be a valuable addition to the victory team machine.
always one of the top teams on the tour and a bitter rival of the Dubai-based victory outfit is Team Abu Dhabi, led by legendary 10-time world champion Guido Capellini. Alex Corella of Italy is a three-time consecutive world champion and always a world title contender. His teammate Tani Alkamzi is a legendary veteran and former world number two, while their third driver Rashid Alkamzi is a very talented F4 graduate with multiple F4 and Nations Cup wins to his name. Mad Croc Baba Racing Team is led by two-time world champion Sammy Celio, who had his best year on the tour last year since clinching his second world title in 2010. He'll be joined once again by his fellow Finnish driver, the ever-improving Philip Roms, who finished sixth last year. Emirates team, formerly Team EMIC, boasts Norwegian sensation and the only woman driver on the tour, Marit Stromoy of Norway, who's a former pole position winner in Portimao. She's joined by German former F4 driver Mike Shimura, who's on his second year on the tour and looking to build on the impressive 2016. Team Sweden had one of its best seasons ever in 2016, spearheaded by one of the most exciting and aggressive drivers on the tour, Jonas Andersson, who got his first Grand Prix win since 2008 in Abu Dhabi last year. For sure we're going to do our best, like always, and uh, the boat is coming better and better all the races we go, and uh, it's a very old boat, but all new boats we build, it's, it's not the same good like this one, so we continue with this. and. Uh, we have the same engines like uh, end of last year and uh, working on some other things, so hopefully it's going to be perfect. Joined by Eric Stark, who returns to the team he started his F1 H2O career in in 2012. Blaze Performance Team is led by one of the most successful drivers on the tour, veteran Italian ace Francesco Cantando, a man who boasts 12 career Grand Prix wins. He's joined by teammate Bartek Marsalek of Poland, who's improving year after year with strong qualifying and race performances. Also back is Maverick F1 team, featuring two Frenchmen, Cedric Deguin, who had a fourth place result at Evian in 2016, and newcomer Amari Jossom, who will be racing in F1 H2O for the first time. The Grand Prix of Portugal will be raced on the Arad River, a seven-pin circuit with one right-hander, tricky river currents and tides to deal with, and three straightaways over 400 meters in length. The BRM qualifying race was postponed till the final race day. Two straight days of gale force winds of up to 70 kilometers per hour meant conditions were too dangerous for practice or racing, and even just getting boats in the water to break engines proved to be challenging. Finally, the strong winds gave way to perfect conditions on the Arad River as the BRM qualifying was ready to get underway. It would be just the one 90-minute qualifying session, but for many, this was their first time on the water or even behind the wheel of their new boats. And with no time for practicing or testing, things were especially challenging and unpredictable for teams. We have all uh, race, qualifying, everything today. We can uh, push very hard today. It's gonna be weird, man. We can make changes, we can change powerheads if we need to, and it's a long time, it's an hour and a half, one session, so. I really don't know how it's gonna go. It's gonna be hard not to run a bunch of laps uh, to maintain patience and wait for good water. Victory team took control early on with Sean Torrente leading the session and his teammate Al Hamili in second. With all 19 boats out on the water at the same time, the challenge would be to read the circuit conditions well and find the opportunities and the clean water in which to get a fast lap time in. Communication between the drivers and their teams would be critical, and the radio men serve as an extra set of eyes on the water. I can't get that right down there. Am I pinching off hard? I'm having a hard time when you get out to the right. I'm trying to, you know, get the gap between you and whoever. So when I say after we get the right hander, go, 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 you gotta go because if you Team Abu Dhabi was having a tough time of it. Their three boats all on the dry dock with engine issues. In one lap we had problem with the engine, now we try to fix it, uh, if not we will have to change and uh, start in that position. With engine
issues resolved, Alex Corella finally dialed in a setup and got out on the water to post a respectable fifth place. But that was cancelled out after qualifying as he had to change engines, bumping him to the back of the starting grid. Francesco Cantando posts a great lap time out there, moving him up into second place behind Torrente. But just one lap after, Cantando crashes out. The Italian was unhurt, and with no spare boat, that would spell the end of his session, as they would try to get the boat ready for the race with a few hours available. Defending World and Portimao Grand Prix champion Philip Schiap set a 43.26 lap time. It wasn't enough to challenge Torrente, but it placed him in the top four. Then Ahmed Al Hamali went out and set a blistering lap time of 43.13, moving back up into second behind Torrente. But he crashed out just after. Bitter disappointment for the Emirati and for victory. It was a huge crash, and he looked doubtful for a race start. What's happened uh, out of control, that's uh, normal for the qualifying people who want to win the qualifying. Returning to Team Sweden, Eric Stark matched Al Hamily's time, literally 43.13, placing him right up in third. But his teammate Jonas Andersson, coming off one of the best seasons in years, was struggling with technical issues. But there was still time to make it. I only have 25 minutes left and I try to do better time. I think we're five now and it's not good enough. Former pole position winner in Portimao, Moritz Stromoy, took advantage of the Al Hamali yellow flag to get more fuel, but later couldn't manage to get past 10th position. Locals got to cheer on their sole Portuguese representative as Duarte Benevente got a 43.49 lap time to move into sixth spot. As the minutes ticked away, all the top drivers were out there throwing everything they had to try and clinch pole position from Torrente's hands. But it was all to no avail. Nobody could beat Torrente's time of 42.80. Sean Torrente wins pole with Al Hamali second, Stark third, followed by Corella, Schiap, and Benevente in sixth. That was the longest hour and a half of my life, man. But so proud of the team, proud of the guys. Just proud to be here. and. Uh... We're just gonna try and win from the pole now, which is easier than the way I normally win. So uh, it was so hard to not make a lap at the end. The boat is so fast, I want to make a lap, but it just wasn't worth the risk. The F1H2O family received the kind of gala dinner welcome that has become a tradition in Portimao where the 15th F1H2O Grand Prix was celebrated in style once again as locals, teams, drivers, crews and their families got to enjoy and unwind together. Final preparations for the race as the 16th Grand Prix of Portugal got underway. Defending champion Philip Schiap would start third on the grid. Yeah, it's a good session for us, but uh, we are a little uh, scared with the fuel and uh, we make the safe regulation on the, on the engine. And uh, it's not my uh, engine like uh, I use usually and uh, it's difficult to, um, to make a good, good uh, time with uh, this setup, but uh, my boat is perfect on the on the, this condition and I think uh, I can make a good start and make a good result. Alex Carello would be starting in 15th position after his engine change. He'll have a hard race ahead of him. Bad morning, now we start last. Uh, we see. It will be a strong race for me, but 50 laps, race is long, so for sure I will try my best. Uh, to arrive in the top spot uh, quickly, and uh, but I will do my best for sure. Eric Stark starts in second position behind Torrente. Yeah, yeah, the plan is to take him, of course. Like we have always a battle, but you know, we're good friends, so we don't gonna do anything funny. So you know, it's a. Lot
long season, I, I, I really need the points, so top three is the goal. So. Cantando and his Blaze team finish working on the boat just in the nick of time. The wind is, is quite a big factor here, like today we saw Ahmed flying away, so suddenly the wind picking up again and uh, let's see, let's hope it's calm for the race and we have a safe race for everybody. Torrente has got the best seat in the house in pole. Benevente has Portuguese hopes riding on him in fourth spot. Cantando just next to him in fifth. Can the Italian build on it? Anderson in sixth. Behind Celio is Stromoy, Marshalek and Shimura. De Guin 11th, Philip Roms 12th. The two newcomer Frenchmen, Morin and Jossam in 13th and 14th. The final seconds before the race. There they go, the first race of the 2017 season is on. Torrente has a great start, leaping out in front, leading the field to the commitment buoy. The number two boat, Peter Moran, gets passed by Roms on his left and Alex Carella on his right as he's left in their spray. Torrente dominates to the first buoy, behind him Philip Schiap and Eric Stark come around neck and neck. Further back, Anderson caught in Duarte Benevente's spray. Torrente opens his lead as Schiap and Stark lock horns for second position down that 400 meters straight away to turn buoy number three. Behind them, Anderson chasing Benevente for fourth spot. Both drivers looking to take advantage of their starting grid positions to try and start the new season off with a podium. Philip Giap has overhauled Eric Stark. The Frenchman is in second, giving chase to Torrente. Stark third. Moritz Stromoy is putting the pedal to the metal as she passes the Frenchman from Maverick F1 team to take eighth spot. Coming up from 15th position and making his way steadily up the field is Alex Corella, who passes German Emirates team driver Mike Shimura to move into 10th position. Two newcomers, Peter Morin from CTIC China and Grant Trask of F1 Atlantic locking horns, but Grant Trask gets the better of Morin as the Australian moves up a spot. Out in the lead with a comfortable gap over Schiap is race leader Sean Torrente. Schiap himself opening a comfortable lead as well over third placed Eric Stark with Benevente in fourth, Anderson just behind him in fifth, and Sammy Celio looking to move up into the top five in sixth. Chased by Bartek Marcelek with Stromoy in eighth and Corella inside the top ten looking to keep moving up through the field. Shame for Francesco Cantando of Blaze Performance Team. He started in fifth, but had to retire in the first lap. Meanwhile, Duarte Benevente in fourth, caught between two Team Sweden boats with Stark up ahead in third and Anderson trying to close in behind in fifth. Behind Anderson, Sammy Celio inching ever closer as the Finn sets his sights on the Swede. Looking comfortable in the lead, Sean Torrente lapping back marker Amori Jassam from Maverick F1. And starting the year off with a win would be just the boost Torrente needs in his bid for a first ever world title. But Torrente first needs to make sure he keeps Schiap off his back. Further back, Alex Corella pushing hard to catch Moritz Stromoy. He almost pushes a little too hard, but he just manages to keep his boat on the water. Jonas Anderson is unlucky. His race is over in lap five as his boat comes to a halt. Moritz Stromoy also retires. Her race only lasts seven laps. Looks like we uh, seized the engine, uh, just uh, run out of power. And I just managed to come in before it stopped completely, but looks for me it seized. In lap eight, Torrente maintains a five second lead over Schiap but Torrente's in trouble. Sean Torrente out with engine problems in lap nine, and Schiap storms into the lead. Stark in second, Celio now in third. Bitter disappointment for Torrente and victory. Yeah, I was just setting a pace, it was fine. Wasn't really even pushing, but it's the way it goes sometimes. Wasn't our day. Don't know, engine, but we don't know what. The high hopes for victory after Torrente and Al Hamily got that qualifying 1-2 have come to naught. Meanwhile, Alex Gorilla continues his quest to move up the field, setting his sights on...
Philip Roms in eighth, with Cedric De Guin up in seventh, and Bartek Marsalek in fifth. Corella tries to find some clean water on the outside, with Philip Roms hugging tight on the inside as the Italian puts the pressure on the young Finn. Lap 15, and what a great race this is turning out to be for Duarte Benevente in fourth in front of the Portuguese fans. Further back, the duel between Corella and Roms continues for seventh place. Three-time consecutive world champion Alex Corella is ducking and weaving, looking for any opportunity he can find to pass Philip Roms. But the Mad Croc Baba driver is solid and cool under the Team Abu Dhabi onslaught. In the lead, Philip Schiap looking very comfortable with a good gap over Eric Stark, the Frenchman on course for a defense of his Portuguese GP title. Sammy Celio is now being chased by number 23, Bartek Marsalek, who overhauled Duarte Benevente to move up into fourth and has set his sights on the fin. The Polish ace is less than two seconds away in fourth and is putting in some excellent top speeds out there as the Blaze Performance team driver tries to get a first ever podium. In the lead, it's all about Shiap, who looks virtually unassailable as Stark trails by 2.81 seconds in the number 15 boat with 22 laps down and another 28 to go. Philip Roms having problems as he tries to get some air into the cockpit before continuing on his way. But a loose camera hits his fuel kill switch and Philip Roms' race comes to an end a little later. Disappointment for the young Finn. Officials give a black flag to number 51, Mike Shimura, for a faulty radio, but he keeps racing unaware of what's happening, having lost radio communication. With just 18 laps left in the race, no change in the top six. Schiap, Stark, Celio, the top three, then Marshalek, Benevente, and Corella closing in on the top five. A feisty battle is unfolding for fourth place between Bartek Marsalek and Duarte Benevente. The Portuguese driver trying desperately to claw his way back up into fourth, but the Polish place performance ace is not budging. Lap 43, the final few laps in the race. Schiap lapping his teammate Peter Marin, and he can surely smell the victory. But Eric Stark is not letting up, closing the gap with a Frenchman to 1.83 seconds and going all out in these last few laps to try and get a first ever F1 H2O win. Marshalek under pressure from Benevente, and the Polish rider takes out a buoy. That will be penalized. Bad blow for Marshalek, who would be given a one lap penalty. The field was thinning out and there were just two laps left in it as Eric Stark kept up his pursuit of Shiap right till the end. But it was heartbreak for Stark with just two laps left and engine failure robbing him of at least a runner-up finish for Team Sweden. Philip Shiap defends his title and wins a second Portuguese Grand Prix in a row. Celio finishes runner-up after the Stark exit as a dejected Eric Stark watches all the boats race by to the finish line. And to the delight of the home crowd, third place goes to Duarte Benevente. The Portuguese driver caps a brilliant and tenacious race off with a well-earned podium. Giap is the Grand Prix champion. Benevente on the podium. Corella from 15th to 4th. A best ever race result for Marshalek. Sixth place for De Guin. Grant Trask in seventh. Stark eighth. Morin with two points in his first race in F1 H2O. Hey, yeah, what I can say. I need to be proud of my team. All the problems, what they, all these guys. We are a small team, not like the others, and, uh, but the spirit is so good. We, we had difficulties, they solve all this morning. We, we work together and we fix all the problems and now we are here. In the team standings, CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team on top, F1 Atlantic in second, after two great results from Benevente and Trask, Matt Kroc Baba third. Especially, I'm, I'm really happy for my, for my team, for my sponsors, you know. They work hard, very hard. We had two months non-stop uh, preparing this race, and uh, we, were, we were fast all the... All the Sunday, <laughs> because we we went in the water only today, but we we were fast uh, all the event, and um, to be able to finish in the podium after a good race is is very good for me. But of course, I want I want them to be happy because this result is for them.
she up on top of the standings after round one with Celio and Benevente in second and third. It's good for the championship, of course, but uh, it's, it's uh, very good for my team because he, he was very hard in two months and uh, my, uh, my team is very strong and I'm very happy for uh, each mechanic because uh, it's a lot of, lot of work on the boat. I have a very good team. That brings to a close the first round of the 2017 UIM F1 H2O World Championship. See you in Evian, France for round two.